I think this is one of the best rabbits out on the market. A, you know, flexibility and movement. A counter measuring number of cycles and speed of stroking. Hi, Komini. Uh, my name is Dan. I'm an engineer here at Love Honey, and let's talk about how we build sex toys. <laughs> These aren't products we're building. And that's kind of a misconception, right? Everyone thinks like, oh, it's a sex toy. Like, it's just a thing. There's a huge context you cannot ignore behind a sex toy. And that's one of the big things, right? Sex is hidden, but all of us are doing it. All of us want it. All of us probably want more of it, even if we're having it, right? We'll either typically have like a spine. Um, so it's just structural plastic that exists to hold silicone in place. On the other side, we have clamshell. We're using that to put our electronics, our battery, our controllers all sit sort of inside that space. Every engineer loves to prototype. We all love to be hands-on, we all love to build. Quick prototype I put together to test some different patterns I had in mind. For every hour of fun, hands-on work, I'm doing 20 hours of other work, right? I'm making sure that these things are safe, right? They're going inside people. And also, it's sex. People are using these things in ways we did not design for. Silicones is a huge part of sex toy design. You can see <laughs> hidden all around the room. Here, we're getting our big tanks of silicones. We're just using, you know, large syringes. Uh, this one's sealed stuck because I let it dry. So we would have plastics, electronics, everything inside of here. That's what they look like. So some sort of box or brick. And we're shooting silicone in and then uh, filling this space. Right, so the running joke is that all of the engineers, right, like we dress down to come to work. We'll wear like the oldest, most hole-ridden, junky t-shirts we have. It gets covered in chemicals, it gets covered in plastics, glues, and silicone, right? One of the most common questions I get is, how can you design toys for vulva owners when you yourself or a penis owner. I'm looking at the user interviews, the research. I'm not building from my experience, my preferences. So like that to me is one of the more fascinating parts of this job. You have to build empathy and you have to be an engineer and a designer and a haptician and a user researcher. You have to be all of these things. And it's like the one product in the world that as a penis owner, I can't intuitively just put on myself and understand. Anything that you produce as an engineer, right? You have to, you have those requirements, and then you have to make sure that you're delivering to those requirements. One of thousands of tests we run here. <laughs> what we lovingly call Mr. Fister here um, is a counter measuring, right? So we we tell it the number of cycles we want it to see, number of cycles, and speed of stroking. So it's not just low and slow, but however our user might be using the toy. So this is one of our simpler tests, but one of our most uh, effective. Uh, so we have a predefined drop height. This is just a little marker here um, onto a steel plate. We will drop these products in box, in crate, in pallet, and then just the product itself. The jokes aside there, it's a job. It's a nine to five. I'm coming in, I'm doing work. It's not that we're all just sitting around masturbating all day in the office. No, right? It's, it's work. Um, it's a lot of work actually. <laughs> Uh, this is our sort of master reference pressure transducer. Quite a straightforward test. Turn it on, turn off smart silence if the toy has it, because it has to be running. We would just roll that right over, seal it up. And then what you can start to see is actually that, that pressure curve. Multiple different levels. So if I turn it to its maximum. Common misconception is that that pressure changes. There's no change in the pressure. Any intensity level is gonna be the exact same pressure change. If you're worried about someone walking in or hearing you, hearing your toy, hearing what you're going on, I mean, it's a staple of like any sort of romantic comedy or TV show. One of the common mistakes people make is that they try to evaluate the noise holding it up in the air. This is compressing air to make pleasure, but it'll make sound too. This is completely sealed up against your body. And now it's a much quieter experience. We have some people here who work here who don't tell their parents because they do have that tension. There's definitely a generational change, but within the generation before mine and the generation before that, yeah, sex was a very different thing. I grew up and started dating before Tinder. An 18 year old today, the pressure for sex is greater than it's ever been before. People are having sex earlier. I think we're seeing much more fluidity into what sex is, to what gender is, to what 
gender could be, to what commitment means. People are getting more comfortable with doing more things, and I, for one, am all for it. I think that taking ownership over your own body and your own pleasure is an incredibly important thing to have. <laughs>